thing with AI is going to completely change what people can expect from search. We are grounded in the fact that you know Google dominates this space. I, I feel like a new race is starting with a complete new platform technology. I'm excited for the users to have choice finally and a real competitive race out there. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella finally thinks he has what it takes to make Bing happen and grab some search engine market share from Google. His not-so-secret weapon? This all started with us and OpenAI coming together with really a research agenda on moving uh, the state-of-the-art of AI forward. Microsoft is taking OpenAI's newest artificial intelligence model and intertwining it with Bing's search data so you can chat with the search engine and get up-to-date information. So the entire point of ChatGPT early on was to just sort of show the power of the large model and the conversational intelligence. We now have not only the current information that you usually expect from a search engine, but you can then have a full conversation around that current information and all the other information that came before. On top of the new AI chat features in Bing, Microsoft is adding ChatGPT-like features to its Edge browser. So I came here to Microsoft's headquarters in Redmond, Washington, to get a hands-on demo of the new tools and hear Nadella's thoughts on AI. The first big new feature, Bing Chat, incorporated right into the front page of Bing, will be an Ask Me Anything box. Type in your query, say, The biggest winners of the 2023 Grammys, because I did not have time to watch it. And up pops your usual search results, which Nadella says has also been improved with AI. But more interesting is this new chat box that will start typing out an answer to the question. As it answers, it also includes citations so you know where the information is coming from. It allows me to then have a full-on conversation around all the search data. So yes, it's annotated. It's about being able to create even the links back to all the publishers. So this is just search, just better. The system took about a minute to return a list of the top Grammy winners. Not exactly fast, but you can tell it to stop responding. Then you can ask follow-up questions like, Do you know if Beyonce is touring? Okay. If you're a Beyonce fan, you might want to hurry and get your tickets before they're gone. Like ChatGPT, you can ask it non-search type things too. Like, Write 10 questions for Satya Nadella about AI. What are the key features and benefits of new Bing chat mode? And how does it leverage AI to enhance the user experience? It really is grounded in search results and helps me have a very contextual chat uh, to be able to get to the right answers. Sacha Bing said, or AI Sacha said, the new Bing chat mode leverages AI to understand the user's intent, <laughs> context, you said context, and preferences to provide relevant, visual, logical, and actionable responses. I love the AI Satya. Yeah. But while these may seem like fun and games in these demos, there are, of course, real misuses of this technology. We have a lot of practice uh, in thinking about safety. AI is only good if it is being used in the real world, understanding, learning human preferences. And our intent is to do that, which is to put stuff out there with safety, but at the same time realizing that we are going to have to think about safety as an ongoing responsibility, not a one-time responsibility. He also told me there are guardrails in place to prevent harmful content, hate speech, and more. The second big feature, Microsoft Edge integration. The Microsoft Edge browser will now have a Bing sidebar where you can ask it to summarize a web page you're on or ask it to generate text. For instance, I asked it to... So I want to write about a letter to Satya Nadella, thanking him for his time. Then I was able to tell it I wanted it written in an enthusiastic tone, in email form, and short. It knows, that's pretty, that's pretty good. There's a lot of fear that AI is going to take our jobs, replace us. Is that unfounded? And how do you think about tools like Bing now and how we use it in the job market? Like I, I, I think of this as, at, at the foundational level, going to help us do our jobs better, reduce some of the drudgery in some of our jobs, uh, whether it's in coding or in writing or in 
uh, automating a workflow or searching for information. So at the fundamental level, I think we need a productivity boost. I feel it'll create more jobs. The barriers to knowledge work will come down. So. I mean, the unintended consequences around labor market shifts are always something we need to be mindful of. But I don't subscribe to this zero sum uh, or one lump of labor fallacy. And I think that we're going to have new jobs get created and more job opportunities. And it sounds like more time, right? For sure. For sure. We outsource some of this. Right? I outsourced some of my question writing to this freed up a little bit more of my time to do something else. And But you're still in, in the loop and you're in charge because you will, you get to accept the draft. That's kind of one of the metaphors I have. It's pretty much all computer interaction going forward. You'll start with a draft. That doesn't mean you don't get to inspect the draft, approve the draft, and redefine or re, you know and, re, and edit the draft. The question is, which company will write that draft for us? Will it be Microsoft with tools like this? Or Google, which owns 90% of the search engine market share. And, right before my interview with Mr. Nadella, announced BARD, its similar AI chat feature that will come to its own search engine. How are you thinking about monetizing this? The last time I checked, software, I mean, it's a search, was the most profitable category uh, there is on planet Earth. So therefore, all I need is a few more users uh, and someone else that I'm competing in has to keep all of their users and all of their gross margin. It's a love, I'm looking forward to that. So no plans to charge for new Bing. It's really advertising model all the way through. We'll start there. And if, we, if there are other models, there may be other models, uh, but there is enough surplus. Let me put it this way. There is so much surplus that goes to one place, which I think would be nice if it was evenly distributed. What about Microsoft Office? Just stay tuned. I fully expect us and uh, to introduce these capabilities, quite frankly, across the length and breadth of Microsoft. What about this guy? Oh, you know, it's sort of like it was early. And so we get to redefine it uh, for the AI age, and it's going to be very useful. So is he coming back? It'll come back in a variety of different ways. I think I'm most excited about Bing as the real incarnation of Clippy. OK, but, but no actual like pop up. I think we have much better design mechanisms to do what Clippy aspired to do back in the day. Does Clippy haunt your dreams? Not really. It's probably the thing that was the most fun character Microsoft introduced, which, you know, think about it, right? We have been on a 30-year journey to perfect it. So I'm excited to be here in 2023 launching Bing with AI.